Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this lesson, we are going to build this image search application in React. So this project is basically a replacement for my recipe search project that I created about a year ago. Unfortunately, the API I used in that project, which was food to fork has been shut down. So a lot of people were messaging me saying that they could not follow along with that tutorial. So I thought it would be a good idea to create something similar, but using a different API. So before we get started, um, let me just walk you through the project and show you how it works. So what we have here is a blank page for starters, and this page has a form and an input. And in here, we can type anything to look for images. So if I type kittens, I get these images back from the API that we're using, which is Pixabay. Now we can click on any of these images and then it takes us to the image page using React Router. Here we are going to credit the author and let people know that this image is the property of Pixabay. Then if we press this home button, we get taken back to the home page again using React Router. And then if we try to submit an empty form, we get this nice little error message. Right, so for this project, I am going to assume that you are comfortable working with JavaScript, React, and React Router. If you are new to any of these technologies, then check out my React for Beginners video or React Router for Beginners video that I have on my channel. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. Right, so first things first, we are going to need a project folder. So go ahead and open this link in your web browser github.com forward slash Hamza hyphen Mirza and see getting this right is going to be a challenge. Let's try again. Github.com forward slash Hamza hyphen Mirza forward slash react hyphen image hyphen starter hyphen files. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So once you're here, go ahead and clone or download these files. And once you've done that, open the project in your terminal and press NPM install to install all the node modules that we need in order to make this project work. Once you've done that, open this project in your code editor. And for this lesson, I'll be using Visual Studio Code because let's be honest, it's 2020. And if you don't use VS Code, then you are not a very cool person. Right, so what we have here is a bunch of files that we're going to start with. First up is the app.js file in our source folder. And this file is going to act as the main wrapper component. Next up, the index.js file. And this is where we are importing all the good stuff like React, Bootstrap, Styles, and then rendering this component onto the main index.html file. And then in this styles folder, uh, we have three different style sheets, actually four, which I will go over once we start creating our components. For now, let's start building the basic structure of our app. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and launch this project in the web browser, just so we can preview the changes in real time. So go to your terminal and type npm start. And this will launch the port 3000 on your computer. And here is what we're going to start with just a simple component that reads this little message. Okay, so now let's go ahead and explore the API that we're going to be working with. So go to your web browser and in your Google search type Pixabay API. And the first link to pop up is going to be the one that we need. So click that link and that should take you to Pixabay's developer portal. And once you're here, scroll down to find your API key. Mine's right here. But remember, you have to first sign up or sign into this website in order to work with their API service. So be sure to do that first. Once you've done that, come back to this page and you can find your API key right here. So go ahead and copy this API key. Then go back to your code editor in app.js file, create a new constant called API underscore key, and then open a new string and paste your API key within the codes. There we go. Now let's grab the URL that we need to make the request to. So let's head back to the browser. Scroll down a little bit, and that's the URL that we're going to make the request to right there. And there's the sample API call. So this link, this one right there, 
is going to respond with this JSON data that we see right here on the screen. And this is what we are going to be using in order to grab the data for our project. So we have the image ID, we have the URL that we're going to use in order to display the image. And then we have the user ID as well as their username. So copy this URL from there. Actually, let's do that in reverse because otherwise it's going to select everything. So copy this, go back to your code editor and then here create a new constant called URL. But this time around, open up a pair of backticks so we can launch a template literal and paste the URL right here. And now instead of this API key, let's get rid of it and then dynamically insert the API key constant that we have right here. Excellent. So for the moment, let's try and obtain the data back from the Pixabay API. Later on, we will set up a form that's going to fire off the request, but for now, all we care about is getting the JSON data to show up in the console. So first things first, let's turn this component into a class-based component. Because we're going to set up our own methods, create our state and use a lifecycle method and that is not possible within a functional component. So I'm going to delete this app components completely. Okay. And I'm going to say class app extends react dot components. And then within there, create the render method and inside of it, the return statement. And within the return statement, let's just return a diff for now that reads app component. Press save. Let's check back in the web browser just to make sure that everything is working. Yes, it is. Okay. Next, let's create a method that's going to be responsible for making the request to this URL. So just above this render method, let's make a new method called handle get request and set it to equal an error function, just like that. And just a side note, I'm using the arrow function to avoid the this keyword binding confusion. See in a traditional method like this. So this one is a traditional method um, inside of a react component. So in a traditional function like this one, the this keyword binds itself to its parent method instead of its parent class. And that can be useful in some cases. But in this case, we want the this keyword to always refer to our app component. So the arrow function sets the this keyword free, meaning it does not bind itself to the this keywords unless we explicitly tell it to do so. So that's the cool thing about arrow functions. So now let's go ahead and log a message to the console that reads something like working. So let me just first convert it back to the error function. Okay, now let's log a message to the console that reads working. Excellent. Now we have no way to actually launch this method. So one thing we can do is make use of the component lifecycle method called component did mount. So just below this handle get request, let's you make use of the component did mount method. And this method runs just once and that is when the component first loads onto the web browser. So in here, we can call the this dot handle get request method and fire it right away. So the this keyword is referring to the app component and then in the app components, we have a method called handle get request. So this is what's happening here. Okay. Now let's press save, head back to the web browser and open up our console. And we can see that we have a message that reads working. So remember, this is going to show up just once when the component first mounts onto the web browser. So when we reload the page, that is when the component first loads onto the web browser. And that is when this component did mount uh, method executes. So we have the message showing up and it reads working and this is perfect. Let's move on. Okay. So now that we have successfully created our methods, let's try and make the web request to this URL. So for that, we're going to make use of two new JavaScript features, the async await 
and the fetch API. So the fetch API is actually a browser based client, but it works in pretty much every modern web browser out there. So it's safe to be used. Now, the first thing that we have to do is make this handle get request method asynchronous. To do that, we need to add the keywords async just before this pair of parentheses right there. And now to actually make the get request, let's get rid of this console first and create a new constant called request and set it to equal fetch. And this fetch is a method, meaning we have to fire it off with a pair of parentheses. And it takes one and only argument, and that is the URL that we want to make the request to. So in this case, the URL is this constant right there. So let's just refer it right here like that. Excellent. Now, there is only one thing missing, and that is to add the keyword await just before the fetch keyword right there. So before we go any further, I'll give you a brief overview of async await. So the keyword async means we are going to make this function return a promise as well as resolve the promise automatically if it is successful. And then we have the await keyword and this keyword only works inside of an async function. And its job is to make the function wait until the promise has been resolved and it has returned a result. That's all this async await is. It just simplifies promises. And then we have the fetch methods and that is responsible for making the web request. So as I mentioned, the return value of this async await method is the result that is ready for us to work with. So first of all, we need to convert the data we get back to the JSON format. So let's extract the return value, which is the result from this uh, request constant right here and store it into a new constant called response. There we go. And then set it to equal request. And on this request constant, we can call a method, which is just JSON. So JSON followed by a pair of parentheses. That's it. Now we have all the data we need and we can test this by logging this um, response constant to the console. So let's say console.log and then response. Now let's save the file. And before we check our progress, let me tell you that these are not the results that we're looking for. Okay, so let's go back to the web browser, open up the console. Here we can see that we have a promise and its initial value is that it is waiting to be resolved. And once it has been resolved, as you can see on this property right here, we can see that the response that we need is right here. But that's not what we want. We don't want the entire promise object logging into the console. What's happening here is that there is another promise waiting to be resolved when we try to convert the data to JSON format in this line. So to fix that, all we have to do is add the keyword await before we fire off this JSON method on this request constant. So here, let's type await. Excellent. So now if you save the file, go back to the console, we can see the data we want. So if we crack open this object, this is the data that we're looking for. So what we need from here is this hits array. And inside of this array, there's a bunch of objects where we can extract the properties from. And that's, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Perfect. Now let's go back to the code editor and see what we're going to do next. So now that we have the data that we need, let's try to simplify it by using this response constant. So as we know, everything is being stored into this response object. So to access the properties, let's drill down this object and grab this hits array. Okay, so back in the text editor, let's say response.hits. Press save, go back to the console, and we can see that the hits array is being logged in. And now let's go back to the code editor and try and do something a bit more interesting. So right here at the top, let's create a new state object. So state equals to an object. And inside of it, let's create a new property called images and set its initial value to an empty array. 
Now inside of this get handle request method, let's create a new line that's going to update the value of our state. So right here, let's say this dot set state, and then we want to grab the images property and set its value to response dot hits. Excellent. Now let's log our state to the console. So here, let's say console.log this dot state dot images. And now let's head back to the console and we can see that the images array is being printed here. Perfect. So let's crack open this. And these are all the objects that we are going to use later on to extract the data. Okay, so let's head back to the code editor. And now we are finally ready to start adding new components. But before we go any further, let's do a little breakdown of what we have done so far. So first things first, we are importing React from React. And then we obtained the URL and the API key from Pixabay's website. And then we have a component called app. And it is being rendered onto the web browser because we are importing it inside of our index.js file. And here we are telling this file to render this component using the react-dom.render method. Okay, now back in our app.js file, we have our state and the state has a property called images and its initial value is being set to an empty array. After that, we have our handle get request method. And inside of this method, we are making a web request to this URL right there using the fetch API. Once we get the response back from the API, we are updating our images state from an empty array to an array of several different objects that we received from the API. Moving on, we have the component did mount method, which is a built in method that comes inside of react components. This method fires off automatically when the component first loads onto the screen. So inside of this method, we are executing our handle get request method. And then we have the render method that displays this little piece of text. Okay, so that is the breakdown of what we've done so far. Let's move on. Right, so now let's create a new component that's going to contain our form. So inside of this source folder, I'm going to create a new folder called image search. Okay. And in here, I'm going to create a new file called image search.js. There we go. And I'm also going to move this image search.css file to this folder right there. So the way we are going to structure this project is we are going to create a separate folder for each of the components. And in that folder, we are going to keep our component as well as the style sheet for that particular component. Okay, so now inside of this image search file, let's first import react. Okay. And then let's create a new functional component called image search. And I'm going to set it equal to an arrow function. And inside of it, I'm going to return a div that reads a message called image search. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and export this component right here at the bottom. So export default image search. There we go. Press save. Now let's head back to app.js. And in here, let's go ahead and import the image search component. So import image search from and then it's image search and then image search. There we go. And now let's render the form component inside of this app component right here. So we can actually see it in the web browser. So I'm going to get rid of this div. Okay. And inside of it, I'm going to create a new div. And I'm going to say image search. And I'm going to make a component of it and press save. Now let's go back to the web browser and we can see the image search in all its glory. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some functionality to our image search component. So back in this image search file, inside of this div, let's create a new form. Okay. And inside of this form, let's create a new input. And we're going to give this input a few attributes. So first up, let's set the autocomplete to off. Okay and then declare a name attribute and set its value to search value. And remember this name attribute, this is what we're going to use later on in order to grab the input value that the user types into the form. Okay. And finally, let's set the placeholder to search for images. And then below this input, let's create a new button and set its text to search. Excellent. Now let's save the file and see what we have in the web browser. So we can see that we have our form there, but the styling is a bit off, but we will worry about styling once we have a fair bit of logic in place. So I can see that I mistyped the word images. It's I am guess, but <laughs> let's try to fix that first. So images, there we go. No, what am I doing? Images, there we go. So now we need to find a way to trigger this um, handle get request method when we submit this form. So how do we do that? Well, the easy way to fix this is pass this handle get request method as props for this image search component. So what we can do is I'm just going to copy this name because that's what I'm going to name this prop and I'm going to set its value to this. So remember, this refers to the app component up there. So this dot handle get request. That means that we will be able to access this method using the props that are available inside of this image search component. Now to access the props, we need to pass in the argument, which is props. So now here, let's find out what's inside of this prop. So let's console log this. Actually, there's no this keyword. Now there's one thing to remember. Inside of a functional component, the this keyword does not work. I typed that on purpose just to show you that it's a very common mistake to make. You can get carried away and you can just type this keyword thinking that it will work, but it won't because this keyword only, only works in a class-based component. Here in this case, the this keyword will not work. So we, what we need to do is we need to say console.log and then just the props. Now press save, go back to the web browser. And here we can see that the props are being logged in right there. And then inside of this props, you can see that there is a property called handle get request. So we can access this method using props dot handle get request. Press save, go back to the console. And there we can see that this is an asynchronous function. And this is all the code that we basically wrote in our app.js file. Okay. And I'm also noticing that this should be div, not DVI. I'm not sure why I cannot spell today. So now an easy way to hook this method up to this image search component is declare a property upon this form element right here. So I'm going to cut this out, this props.handle get request method, and I'm going to get rid of this console log. And in here, I'm going to use a built in react attribute that we can use on form elements. And that attribute is called on submit. Okay. And I'm going to set its value to props dot handle get request. So now if I press save, head back to the web browser, nothing is going to change, but what's happening now is we are extracting the handle get request method from the props object. And then we're telling this component to trigger this method as soon as this form has been submitted. And we're doing that by declaring an on submit attribute. And remember, this is not a custom attribute. This is a built in react attribute. Okay. So how do we actually test that this is working? I mean, there is no way for us to know if it's actually working or not. 
So first of all, let's go back to this app.js component because at the moment, this method is being fired off right away inside of this component mount. So I'm actually going to get rid of it because this was just to get the initial value of the results that we get back. So I'm going to delete this um, component mount method entirely. Press save, go back to the web browser just to make sure that there are no errors. Okay, that's good. So now this is where we need to make use of this, um, the form elements right here. But since we have set up this method in a way that when this form gets submitted, that is when this method is going to run. So let's test this theory. Let's go back to the web browser and then press search. Now keep your eye there, like just for a split second, you will see a little line appear, but then it's going to disappear within half a second. So as soon as I press this search button, keep your eye right there. Did you see that little line? So the results did appear for a little bit, but they disappeared. Why? Because we went through a full page refresh. Now the default behavior of any form in HTML or even JSX is that they will trigger a full page refresh. So what happens here is when we press the search button, the results, they do get loaded, but they disappeared right away because the, the page refreshes itself. So we, all we need to do to fix that is passing the event object as an argument to this handle get request method. So we can call it event or EV or E, it honestly does not matter. The main thing is that we need to access a property of this event argument or the event object and the property is called prevent default. Now the prevent default is actually another method and as the name suggests, this is going to prevent the default behavior of a form. Now, what's the default behavior? The default behavior of the form is that it, re it refreshes the web page as soon as the form gets submitted. So what this line is going to do is it's going to make sure that the page does not get refreshed as soon as we submit the form. So now if I press save, head back to the web browser and press this search button, we can see that the results are there just as they were before. So we are definitely getting there with our functionality. Let's keep moving. Okay, so now let's take a moment to talk about this URL right there. So if you take a closer look, we can see that there's a parameter called Q and its value is set to yellow flowers. This means that it does not matter what we type in our form because every time we click search, we are going to get the results for yellow flowers. And we can even check that. So let's go back to the web browser and then crack open one of these objects. And if we try to open up this URL in a new tab, we can see that it is a picture of a flower. So now if we go back to the code editor and instead of this yellow flowers, let's type something like um, banana. Okay, press save, go back to the web browser, click search. And now if you crack open one of these uh, objects again, go to this um, path and open up the URL, we can see that there is a banana there. So all these objects that you see right here have some kind of a banana in them. And no, it's not the banana that you're thinking about, but that's not the point. The point is that whatever goes here inside of this URL right there in this place, is what we're going to get back as the response. So that means we can programmatically insert the value of our input inside of this URL, right? So let's first grab the input value, okay? So if you remember, back in this image search component, we gave this input a name attribute called search value. So now back in app.js file, below this e.prevent default, Let's create a new constant called search term and set it to equal e dot target dot elements dot search value dot value. 
Now this line is drilling down an object of different HTML attributes that are available to us and then it's going to find this name attribute whose value is search value and then it's going to grab a property attached to it which is this value property right here. So now let's go ahead and log this search term constant to the console. So right here let's say console.log and then search term. Press save, go back to the web browser and here let's type, what do we type? Frog. Press search and we can see the frog is being logged into the console. So now that we have the input value, that means we are ready to use it inside of this URL right there. For that, however, we're going to have to cut this URL constant and paste it inside of this handle get request method. So cut this out and then paste it just below this search term constant. And the reason we did that is because the value of this input is only going to be available inside of this handle get request method. This is something known as scope in JavaScript. So we can definitely use this API key constant anywhere in the side of this file because this API constant is in the global scope. But the value of this input, the one that we have here, only lives inside of this handle get request method. That means we cannot use it outside of this method, okay? Because this is just how scoping works in JavaScript. So now what we can do is since this is a template neutral, that means we can dynamically insert our own variables or constants. So I'm going to get rid of this banana, okay? And in here, I'm going to type in a dollar sign followed by a pair of curly braces. And here, I'm going to copy this search term and paste it right here. So now let's go back to the console, okay? And now whatever we type in here, should come back as a result when we make the API call. Okay, so let's start with typing kitten. Okay, press search. And we can see that kitten is being logged in. But now the main thing is, are we actually getting this, this kitten response back in the web browser? I'm sorry, in, not in the web browser, in the console. So let's crack open one, one of these objects. And let's go to this link so go to this link and see what we get back and there we can see we have an adorable little kitten right there so that means everything is working right so now instead of logging everything to the console let's try to print some data on the web browser's window so for that we need to make use of our state so you see the only way for us to render the results to our ui is by grabbing what's inside our images array so for starters, it is empty, but as we submit the form and the state's value gets updated, the images array starts to fill out and it provides us with the data that we can work with. So to do that, let's go to our render method. And just below this image search component, let's open up a pair of curly braces. Because remember, now we are working within JSX. So to make use of pure JavaScript stuff, you have to wrap it in a pair of curly braces. So now we need a way to grab each and every item that is inside of this images array right there. But the trouble is we cannot use a for loop or a for each loop because JSX does not allow that. But the one thing we can do is we can make use of the array.map method. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and try and explore this map method in the browser's console. So I'm back in my web browser console. Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. And let's say we have an array of names. So I will create an array called names. So const array equals, and I'm gonna set it equal to a pair of square brackets. And inside of it, I will list my name which is Hamza, obviously. I will list my cat's name and my cat's called Simba because he's a ginger cat, so why not? And my brother's name, which is Hassam. Excellent. So now we can map over each of these elements and manipulate them without changing the original array. So to use the map method, we start off with the name of the array, which in this case is names. And then we can say names.map. 
and this is a method and inside of it we pass in a callback function and then this callback function also takes one argument and its value is set to each of the elements that are present in the original array so you can call this anything but I will call it name and now the return value of this entire map method is each of the elements that is present in the original array right there so now we can manipulate these elements without changing the original array and that's what we want to do so let's say that inside of this callback function I want to add my family name at the end of each of these names so I can say return name which is this argument so remember its value is each of these names right there so now you can say name plus and then I can add a string called Mirza and Mirza is my last name so now if I press enter we can see that there is an error and the, the error is that I should have named it names instead of an array so I'm just going to redo the whole process so const and I'm gonna set this value to names see it's very common to make these stupid errors I mean this should not have happened but this is part of being a developer you know this is part of writing code that you just make the silly mistakes every now and then so now I can just recycle the previous line that I wrote and now you can see that the space Mirza is being appended at the end of each of these elements in this array right there but the cool thing is that if we try to print the original names array so names we can see that it stays unchanged so I hope that explains the map method and I know it was a bit of a detour but I wanted to take time explaining it just in case there is JavaScript beginner watching this video okay so now let's refresh the page clear up the console and now let's head back to our code editor so here inside of these curly braces let's first make a check by saying this dot state dot images dot length is greater than zero and we are doing this because we don't want to map over an empty array so remember the initial length of this array is zero because there is nothing inside of it until we make the API request in this method so now we can make use of conditional rendering by using the AND operator which is the ampersand ampersand symbol and now we can say this dot state dot images dot map and then we pass in the callback function and let's give this callback function the argument and I'm gonna call it image because this is referring to the individual image element that's inside of the array okay and now in here let's return a paragraph and inside of this paragraph we need to open up another pair of curly braces because now this is JSX so to make use of anything that's related to pure JavaScript we have to put in another pair of curly braces so here we can say return image so remember this image is this image argument right there and now this image argument has access to everything that gets loaded inside of this images array so if you remember the images array gets filled with a bunch of different objects as soon as we submit the form so we can say that image and then dot tags and if you're wondering where this tags is coming from I will show you that in a minute so now let's press save head back to the web browser and search for dogs press search and now we can see that we are getting some data printing to the screen and this is a great first step and if we crack open one of these objects we can see that there is the uh, tax property right there okay so for each of the elements in the array which is from 0 to 19 we're getting everything printed onto the web browser and this is brilliant now let's talk about this warning it says each child in a list should have a unique key prop and this is actually react complaining that we should pass in a key prop to whatever we are returning inside of a map method so what we're doing here is we're returning this paragraph so we should pass in a prop or in this case an attribute called key 
And the reason we need to do this is nothing to do with JavaScript or our UI, it's actually React. React wants to know what kind of data we are trying to print onto the web browser and in case we ever need to manipulate the data, React can easily use the key prop to change what we are trying to change. Okay, so for now, let's just say key and it needs to be a unique value, okay? It cannot be repetitive. So to grab the key prop, let's grab the image ID. Let's see if we can find the ID, there we go. So if you go back, we can just say image.id. So now if you press save, head back to the web browser and search for docs again, we can see that the warning is gone and now we're getting everything printing onto the web browser. Excellent. So now let's head back to the code editor. And what we should really do is create a new component for this list of images that we are rendering because putting this logic inside of our main component render method is not a good idea. So inside of this source folder, let's create a new folder called image list. And then inside of this folder, let's create a new file image list.js. And let's also drag this image list CSS file to this image list folder. Excellent. Now in here, do we need to make use of state? No, we don't. So let's make it a functional component because we do not need to import all the functionality that comes with a class-based component. So first of all, let's import React from React. And then I'm gonna create a new constant called image list. And I'm gonna set it equal to an arrow function. And inside of it, I'm going to, excuse me, just return a div and I'm going to say image list and then let's export this image this component right here at the bottom. So export default image list. Press save. Now back in our app.js file, let's first import the image list component. So import, actually let me just duplicate this line. Copy paste and I'm going to change this to image list. There we go. And then let's create a new instance of our image list component inside of our render method. So I'm actually going to delete this because we will make use of a map method inside of the image list component. So I'm going to get rid of this completely. And here I'm going to say image list. And I'm just going to make an instance of it. So press save, go back to the web browser just to make sure it is there. Yep, there it is. So now let's go back and see what we're going to do next. So now we need to somehow give our image list component the access to our images array that lives in the state object. But the trouble is our state lives in the app component and our image list component lives in its own file. So this seems like a case of passing data from one component to another. And how do we pass data from one component to another? We use props, much like we did here with the image search component. So we already have an instance of our image list component. Now all we need to do is pass the images array. And to do that, I'm going to create a new prop called images and set it to equal this dot state dot images. Excellent. Now press save and back in our image list components, we now have access to the images array via the props object that we can pass in here as an argument. So let's log this props object to the console and see what we get back. So console.log props, press save, go back to the web browser. And for starters, the images array is empty because this is not going to get filled up unless we make the API request. So let's look for dogs again, press search. And now you can see we get an array of different objects. So now back in the editor, we can make use of this props object and we can map over this array and grab each of the elements that are present in the array. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to get rid of this image list component. And in here, I'm going to open up a pair of curly braces. Now in here, I can say props. And remember the name of the array is images. So props.images.map. 
and in here I'm going to call in pass in the callback function and then I'm going to pass in the image argument because this is going to store the value of each of the objects that live inside of the array. So here I can return a new paragraph and inside of it I need to make use of some pure JavaScript stuff so to do that I have to pass in a pair of curly braces. So now I can say image.tags because remember that's the property that we're just grabbing for now and then if I press save head back to the web browser and then look for dogs again press search we can see that we do get a list of tags printing to the screen and this is brilliant but we still have a warning so what we need to do is pass in the key prop so I believe it was key set it to equal image dot id press save go back to the web browser and look for dogs again press search and we get what we're looking for <clears throat> just a quick side note this adding this image dot in front of every property that we're going to grab and we're going to grab a few more is a bit tedious i mean we can simplify it quite a bit using the javascript es6 destructuring methods so to do that i can actually get rid of this image array once and for all uh, i'm sorry the image uh, argument and to destructure an object what you do is you pass in a pair of curly braces and from there you can grab all the properties that you want so for the moment we are using the id property and the tags property so here i can just pass in id and then tags and now I can just get rid of this images dot and then this is going to massively simplify our code and it's a lot more cleaner to look at. So now just to make sure that everything is still working, let's go back to the web browser and look for kittens this time, press search. And we can see that we are still getting the same results as we were before. The only difference is that our code is a lot more simple now. Okay. Right, so this is all well and good, but we don't really want to just print out a paragraph that shows a bunch of tags, okay? We actually want to structure our image list components in a way that it displays different images, and then below that image, there is a button tag that's going to ultimately take us to the individual image page. So before we write down any complex structure, Let's first lay out the basic image tag and the button that we're going to display. So I'm going to get rid of this paragraph tag once and for all. And in here, I'm going to open up a pair of parentheses and inside of it, open up a new div. And in here, I'm going to return an image tag. So now where is the source going to come from? So let's go back to the web browser and then crack open one of these objects. And this is actually what we want to grab in order to display the image. So large image URL is the property that we need. And now back in our code editor, I'm going to replace this with a pair of curly braces. And here I can actually get rid of these, uh, the tags for now, because we're going to need the ID and I'm going to paste the large image URL. And then I'm going to do the same here as well. And now we need an alt property as well. So we can actually pass in the tags here. So let's get the tags back and pass them right here, just like so. And then remember, we also need a key prop. And traditionally, we pass in the key prop to the most parent element that we are returning. And in this case, the most parent element is this div. Okay, so we can pass in key and set it equal to ID. Now let's also create a new button and call it search. Now, before we go any further, let me tell you, this is going to look absolutely ugly in the web browser because we don't have any styling in place. So let's go back to the web browser and look for dogs, press search. And you can see that <laughs> it's, it's looking really bad because the images are are of different size and different height and different width. So it's, yeah, it's just not looking too great. I mean, the dogs are absolutely adorable, but we need to do a bit of work in order to improve the look of our project. So now you're gonna have to watch me type quite a bit of 
HTML structure. Well, it's not HTML, it's JSX, but you get the idea. So I will fast forward this whole process so you don't have to watch me type, but it's going to be quite a bit of structure. So you can either just copy and paste everything from the starter files to this component, or you can just type it with me. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so <clears throat> now this is the basic layout in place. Now all we need to do is import the style sheet that I've written for this component. So I talked about these briefly earlier, but essentially th these are all the styles that I've pre-written because this isn't a lesson on CSS. So obviously I created this video assuming that you already know CSS. So feel free to take a look at all these um, different style sheets that are there. So this one is for image search component for the form, which we will add later on. And then this one here is for the image list. So I've named these classes very appropriately. So feel free to take a look at them and then you'll get that. You'll get an idea of what's going on. Okay. So right here, let's import image list.css, press save, go back to the web browser. And now let's look for dogs, press search. And we can see that everything is looking pretty neat now. So as I said, I didn't want to waste your time by having you watch me, um, you know, type out all this structure because honestly, it's not really anything to do with react. So here's the structure right in front of you. It starts from this div. Okay. And then it goes all the way to the end of this div right there. So feel free to type it out, copy it, do whatever. And once you've done that, come back to the video and we'll be good to go. And I've just noticed that this should be view and not search. So let's change that. And while we're in the topic of styling, let's also go back to our image search components. But I promise this is not going to take as long. So here we can, we can improve the structure a little bit. We can actually destructure this handle get request method. So we don't have to type in the props dot keywords. I mean, it does not make a difference, but it just looks better. So here let's pass in a pair of curly braces and then pass in the handle get request methods, press save. And now, first of all, let's import the style sheet for this component. So style sheet image search dot CSS. <laughs> And that's it. So if you go back to the web browser, we can see our form looks much better. And if you look for dogs again, this is a much nicer looking application. Okay. Right. So our application is looking great. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> Lol. Okay. So now it's time to implement react router. So what we want to do is create a new component that's going to display the individual image we click on and then show some of its details. So first things first, let's create a new folder and I'm going to call it image view. Inside of this folder, let's create a new file called image view.js and then drag this image view CSS file inside of it. Excellent. Now in here, let's just lay out a basic functional component for now. So import react from react and then const, I'm going to call it image view and set it to equal an error function. And then inside of it, return a div that reads image view for now. Okay. And now, let's export this components right here at the bottom. So export default image view. Perfect. So now let's create another component that's going to act as our wrapper components. And that is where we're going to make use of react router. So inside of this source folder, let's go ahead and create a new file called router dot JS. And first things first, we're going to import react 
from React. And before we do anything else, let's just lay out the basic the basic structure of the component. So it's going to be a functional component called router or router, depends where you are. Okay, and I'm gonna set it equal to an arrow function. And in here, for the moment, let's say div, call it router. Why do I keep typing the O as a capital? Okay, export defaults and then router. <laughs> Press save and then now this is what we want to render in our index.js file instead of this app components because this is where we're going to import the app components and in here we're going to put in a bunch of react router logic. So now back in our index.js file, let's replace this with router. Okay, press save, go back to the web browser and it says that um, router.js line four. Let's see what's happening there. Line number four. Oh, we actually need to add the return keywords. My bad. Return and then router. There we go. Now it should work. So as I said in the beginning, I am going to assume that you already know how to work with React Router. If you are new to it, then feel free to check out my React Router tutorial. And if you already know how to work with React Router, just stay here with me. Okay, so I already have the React Router dependency installed in this project, it's this one right there. So we don't need to install anything with NPM. So first things first, I'm going to grab a few named exports from the React Router DOM package. So import from React Router DOM. And the named exports are browser router, uh, switch, and then it's route. So now this browser router is going to act as the main wrapper div. I mean, it's not a div, it's a basically a wrapper component. So here we can say browser router, okay. And inside of it, we need to wrap everything inside of a switch component, just like so. And then here we can declare our route. So for the, for the first route, what we can do is we can give this one a path of the forward slash, which is just the home page. And then the component that we want to show for this path is the app component. <clears throat> but in order to do that, we first need to import the app component. So import app from, and then it's app, there we go. And then we need to create another path. So let's say routes, come on, there we go. <laughs> and then the path is gonna be a little different because we want to throw in a create string right at the end. So this path is gonna be called forward slash image and then forward slash colon ID. Now this ID is going to get replaced by whatever goes in here. We will talk about this in great detail later on, but for now, just know that this is a replaceable variable, okay? Anything can take place of it. And now the component that we want to show for this path is image view. And then we also need to import image view component. So import image view from, and then we need to go to the image view folder and then grab the image view file. Excellent. Now, one last thing that we need to do is give this initial path a value or an attribute in this case called exact. And we need to do this because React Router by default renders everything that matches the initial character. In this case, the initial character is the forward slash. And this forward slash is also present in our image path right there. So what this is going to do is it's going to render both of these components of on the same page. And we don't want that. We only want the app component to show up on our home page. And then we only want the image view component to show up on our forward slash image path. Okay. So now if I press save, go back to the web browser, everything should still work as it was before. So if I search for dogs, press search, we can see that everything is there. Now we need to find a way to make this button work. So we need to set this up in a way that when we click it, we get taken to this path and then this gets replaced with whatever image ID that exists inside of the object, okay? 
Okay, so to achieve that functionality, we need to go ahead and make changes to our image list file, this one right there, because this is the button that we're using to navigate to the individual image page. So what we want to do is wrap this button inside of a component that comes with React Router. So what we need to do is import a named export called um, React Router DOM. And what we want to import is a component called link. Now this link acts the same way as the anchor tag in Blame HTML. Its job is to navigate from one position in the project to another. So what we want to do now is cut this button out, open up a link tag, and then create a pair, and inside of it, paste the button. But that's not all there is to it, because technically it is a link, but in order to make sure we get taken to the individual image, we need to pass this opening link tag one attribute, and that attribute is called two. Now, normally you can make this work by saying that what path you want to go to once this button has been pressed. So we can say like, go to this path or go to forward slash image like that. And then the ID, but in this case, we want to pass it multiple values because we want to pass it a path, which is obviously what's going to happen once we click the button and then we get taken to that path. But we also want to pass it the state value, which is the image. Because remember, the image state here is what we are working with. So I talked about destructuring early on, but what we're going to do in this case is we're not going to destructure anything here because we need to pass in the entire image object to one of those values that we're going to create here briefly. So first of all, let's get rid of this entire destructured element and replace that with image. And now we also need to make changes here. So we need to say image dots, and then we also need to change that to image dot tags. Excellent. So now in, instead of passing in a string value to these two attributes, we need to pass it two pairs of curly braces. Okay. Now the first property that we need to pass is called the path name. If you remember the path name that we set up here was forward slash emit forward slash colon ID. Now back here in image list components, this is the path that we want to pass in. So instead of opening up a regular string, we're going to open up a pair of backticks to initiate a template literal. And here the path is forward slash image and then forward slash. Now, what do we want to insert in place of this ID? So we want to add image ID here instead of this static colon ID. So if you remember, I did say that this colon ID, especially this colon means that anything after that is replaceable. Okay. So what we can do is get rid of this and here, let's say dollar sign curly brace. And now we want to insert the image ID. And I just remembered we need to add the image prefix here as well. So image dot ID. And this is actually what we can copy and paste right there. Okay. And then the next property that we need to declare is called state. Okay. And this is going to be an object inside of it. You can call it anything, but I'm going to name the states image. Okay. And I'm going to set its value to this image right there. So just like, so there we go. Now here we can use some cool ESX magic, which implies that if there is an object and inside the object, the name of the key and the values are the same, then we can actually just leave it there like this. Okay. So this is same as saying image is equal to image. But if that was something different, like if this was images or images, but then we would have to type it as it is. But since this image and this image are the same words, we can actually just leave it there like that. It does not make a difference. You can still type it that way. It just simplifies your code to a fair degree. So what we've done here is we have access to this image, you know, the object that gets stored inside of this image. We have access to it inside of our image view components. And the reason for that 
is that we have declared a property to a link that is linked to the button that takes us to the path name when it gets clicked. So this is what is linking this component to this component. And then through the state, we have access to this image arguments. Okay. This will make a lot more sense once we actually start building our image view components. So let's go to our image view components and see what we can do there. So here, as I said, we have access to all the objects that are inside of this image property. We have access to it via the props arguments. Okay. And we can actually prove it. So here we can say console.log props and then press save. Go back to the web browser and let's look for pizza. Press search. And now when we click on this view button, we are going to get taken to that path of forward slash image forward slash colon ID. And whatever ID of this image is, is going to replace that colon ID. So let's go, let's press this button. And you can see that the colon ID is being replaced with the image ID. But the interesting thing is that if you open up the console and these warnings that you see, they're actually coming from some node module on line number 12,357. So we don't have that many lines of code, which means that this, these warnings, they've got nothing to do with the code that, we, that we've written. So we can actually ignore this message and we can actually ignore this message as well. And now what we're left with is if we crack open this image view line number four, because remember, this is where we're logging our props object to the console. So let's open this object and see what we get back. So the first property is the match property, and this is the URL. So we were starting off with forward slash image forward slash colon ID. This, that was the starting point. The next stop, once this, once we actually visit the URL after pressing the button, this ID gets replaced by the actual image ID. So that's well and good. So now we have another property called location. Inside of this location property, we have a property called state. And inside of the state, we have an image property. And if you look, this is the exact same response that we were getting back in the original API response. So as you can see, we looked for pizza. So if we check somewhere in the tags, there's a pizza slice Italian. So I hope that this is starting to make sense now. So we can actually make use of this state.image property to display the data on our screen. So to do that, let's go back to our code editor. And now to actually extract the properties, what we have to do is drill down this image. So it's going to be something like props.location dot state and then dot image. So let's go back to the console and try to clean up our result first. So props dot location dot state dot image. Press save. And there we go. I don't know why these warnings keep popping up. Okay, so now this is the object that we can use. I mean, it's, it's been massively simplified. So all we need to do now is extract out some of the properties that live in here. Okay, so let's go back to the code editor and lay out what we are trying to achieve. So first of all, obviously we need an image and inside of this div, I'm going to get rid of this image view and I'm going to open up a new image tag and I'm going to set its source to its image dot and then large image URL. And then I'm going to set its alt tag to image dots image dot tags. There we go. So let's press save just to make sure that it is showing up and it's <laughs> I mistyped it again. What is wrong with me? Okay, so image, there we go. Let's go back to the web browser and it's still not working. I wonder why because this should be props dot image and this should also be props dot image. Press save, go back to the web browser and it's still not bloody working cannot read property large image URL of undefined. And I know what this is. What's happening here is we need to actually drill down the property like this. So props.location.state.image. But this is going to get a bit ridiculous 
because we don't want to do this for every element that we have inside of our return statement. I mean, we have the image tag, then we're gonna have a paragraph tag, a h4 tag, a button, and we don't really want to put this props.image in front of each and every property. This is going to get extremely messy. So what we can do is right up there, create a new constant, okay? And this is another form of destructuring. So what we can do is, stay with me, const followed by a pair of curly braces and set it to equal props.location.state.image. Now, from within this property, the image property, we can extract whatever we need. So obviously we need large image URL, okay? We need the tags. And then we also need the username for the user and then the page URL that we can redirect our users to, okay? And one cool thing we can do here is we can give these properties our own preferred name. So I don't like that we have to use the large image URL property. So we can declare our own name. So to do that, let's type in a colon and then set it to image. Now, if we use this image anywhere inside of our file, this is going to suggest that the value of this image is this large URL image right there. So this basically is just a nickname for this property, okay? And I also want to set this to owner. Just like so. There we go. And everything else is good to go. So now here, instead of using this large image URL, we can actually get rid of it just like that. And we can also get rid of this props. And then here we can just say tags. So now if you press save, go back to the web browser, we can see that there is an image showing up and this is perfect. Okay. Now what else do we need? Well, we also need a paragraph tag that lets people know that this is the copyright of Pixabay. So let's create a new paragraph tag and then we need to insert the HTML entity for the copyright symbol. And that is the end percent sign followed by the copy keywords and then a semicolon. And here we can say Pixabay. Let's go back to the web browser just to make sure it's there. Yep, there it is. And now next up, we want to credit the author. So let's go ahead and create a H4 right there and say credit and set it to equal a spam. Inside of it, let's just throw in the name of the owner. So remember, we can just use this word right there. Owner, there we go. Let's indent this back. So what do we need to do next? Well, there's also a download button that users can use to get redirected to the page where we where they can download this image from. So let's type in download colon and then a span inside of the span. Let's open up a an anchor tag. And now the href of that is going to be this page URL right there. So let's set it to equal page URL. But we want this to open in a new tab. Like when the user clicks this link, they should get redirected to it in a new tab. So for that, we can use the HTML target attribute and we can set it to equal underscore blank. This is going to make sure that whenever user clicks this link, they get taken to the link, but the link opens in a new tab. So our application remains open in the current tab, but the new tab opens and that's where this link is going to be showing all the data that's supposed to be shown, if that makes any sense. Okay, so in here, let's type go to download. Press save, go back to the web browser and see if we have what we want. So here we have the credit, which is perfect. And let's try and press this and see what happens. So this does not appear to be working. So let's go back to our code editor. And this is because this needs to be within the anchor tag right there. So let's go back and press this go to download. And you can see we get taken to the relevant page and this is perfect. And here we can download the files. Right, so now we need to add a button on this image view component that we can click and then we get taken back to the home page. So to do that, let's go back to our code editor. And in here to add the button, Let's first import the link tag from React Router DOM. So it's going to be a named export from React Router DOM. 
and here we need to import the link component. There we go, press save. And now just below this H4, let's open up a new button tag and inside of it a link tag. And then let's give this an attribute of two and then set it to equal the home page or the base URL. And then here we can say home. So now let's go back to the web browser, press home, and then we get taken back to the home page. So now the only thing that's missing is the error message when we press search. So when we press search, it does give us a default set of images. And while this isn't a bad thing, I mean, it doesn't make much sense to just press search and then we, and then we get a bunch of images back. It only makes sense for us to see the images when we actually type something in there. So to do that, let's go back to our app component right there. And then here we can conditionally render this image list component. So first of all, let's cut this out and then open up a new set of curly braces. In here, we can first declare a new property called error in our state. So error and for starters, let's set its value to null. And now inside of this handle get request method, let's first get rid of these two console logs because we don't need them. And now here we need to make a check. So first of all, let's cut this line out. And now we can check for the presence of our search term. So obviously this is the user input. So we can do something like we can make a check that if this search term is present, then we can go ahead and set the value of our state, which is the images array. And if this search term is not there, then we can change the value of our error state. So to put that in practice, let's create an if statement. So we can say that if there is no search term, so this is going to be the Boolean value. So we can reverse this by using the exclamation mark right here in the beginning. So this is going to flip the value. So this is going to evaluate to false, which means that the search term does not exist. So this is saying that if there is no search term, then what we want to do is we want to set the value of our error. So this dot set state and then the value of the error is please provide a value. And then if that is not the case, then we can go ahead and continue with updating our images array. And in here, what we can do is we can make a check that if the value of our error state is null, that means there are no errors. However, if it is anything other than null, that means there is an error. So in that case, what we can do is first of all, let's cut this line out. And let's say this dot state dot error is not equal to null. And now we're going to use something called a ternary operator. So if you don't know what a ternary operator is, stick with me and I'll show you. So first of all, type this out with me and then we'll go through it step by step. So a question mark, and then we're going to create a div. Okay. And inside of this div, I'm going to say this dot state dot error. And let's also give this div a style just some inline react styling and I'm going to give it a color of FFF, which is white. And I'm going to say text align and set it to center. There we go. So now what we need to do is add in a colon and here we're going to paste the line that we cut out. So what's going on here is we're first making a check. We're checking that if the value of the state is not equal to null, then what we want to do is render out this div, which reads the value of the state, which in that case is going to be, please provide a value. And then this colon stands for else. So this is essentially an if else statement. So what we're checking is if, the value of the error is not equal to null, then do this. So this question mark refers to the then clause. Else, so this colon refers to the else clause. So if none of this evaluates to true, then do this. So if this happens, do this. If it doesn't, then colon, do this. 
So now if I press save, go back to the web browser and try to submit an empty form, we can say that we have an error that reads, please provide a value. And if we type something here, let's say burger, press search, and this does not appear to be working. So let's go back and see what's going wrong. And I know what's going wrong. What we've done here is we've set the value of the state to please provide an error. And this stays there because even if we do type in a search term there, the value of the state remains the same because we are not changing it anywhere. So even if we do type in a value, this still evaluates to true because we are not resetting the value of the error in this state. So in here, what we can do is say error and set it back to no. Okay, so see, is this little things like this that do come up as a mistake? I mean, I could have just edited out this part, but I just want to show you that this is the part and parcel of being a developer and it's perfectly normal to make mistakes like that. Okay, so now let's go back to the web browser, try to submit an empty form and it's working like we wanted to. And then if you press, and then if you type in burger, press search, the error goes away and we get the images for the burger. And now if we click on one of these burgers, we get taken to the page where all the good stuff is. And then we can go home. Perfect. So the only thing that's missing now from this application is the image view styling. This right there. I mean, the image is too big. These don't, these don't look too bad, but it's the image that really needs some styling. So I'm not going to bore you with all the styling parts because this is the bit that needs styling. So what, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly do all the styling and then I'm going to skip to the part where the styling is complete. And then you can copy the whole structure by seeing what's on the screen, or you can just go to the GitHub repo and then copy the styling from there, because honestly, I don't want to bore you with it. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so this is the final structure of this component. As you can see, this would have taken quite a bit of time to get it right because there's quite a bit of structure there. So what's happened here is I've imported the image view CSS file, which is this one right there. And then what I've done is I've just added some bootstrap classes and then the classes that are supposed to be there that I've written in this file. So now if we go back to our application, Let's first submit an empty form and now let's look for cats, press search. And if we open one of these, let's open this one because this is what my cat looks like. Like I said, I have a ginger cat and this is exactly what he looks like. So we can see that this is a much better styling. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but that will do. Okay, so that's everything for this application and I hope you learned something from it. And if you did, then please drop me a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'm actually trying to, so the keywords here is trying. I'm trying to create a Redux tutorial. And to be honest, it is very hard to explain Redux because Redux is a very complex library. But I'm doing my best and I hope to get the Redux tutorial out within the next two weeks or so. Okay, so again, thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.